Um, nothing is, is fully baked for a new process. We've been talking and we're still talking. We, we presented to the select board last night and there were some good ideas that came out of that. Uh, so this is very much in process and uh, we're looking forward to getting everyone's input and ideas. Um, there's a bunch of folks who are, are part of the group and uh, some of them are here tonight so I want to do a quick introduction. Uh, you probably know most of these folks, but if, if you could just start down there, John, introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm John Burnham. I'm the general manager at uh, the Taconic Hotel. Carolyn Blitz. I'm the new owner of Stratton Magazine. Uh, Ron Mancini, Mother Merricks. Paul Carocho, TVW Real Estate. Amy Chamberlain, the perfect wife restaurant and tavern. Bill Drunzek, uh, Spiral Press Cafe, and uh, redoing the bank building on Main Street. Pauline Moore, the town of Manchester. All right, we also have Joy um, and Andy Reed from Sotheby's. Lana. That's part of the group. Lana. 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 And Lana Howland. Uh, so it's been a good, good group, a lot of interesting conversations. Uh, go ahead, Pauline. So this obviously started out, out of a conversation of um, feeling uh, a void you know, after the, the chamber went away. Um, nothing happened for, for many months and that was probably a good thing. We were all kind of just feeling our way. Um, but even when the chamber was here, there was, there was a void of things not getting done or us not, not reaching our potential in, in terms of uh, what we could be doing together as a town. Um, so all, all these conversations started out of just a feeling of uh, something missing and let's start talking about um, what we can do, if anything. Um, and from the feeling of that there's a big risk in doing nothing. Like if we just sit around and everyone does their own little thing in their own little corner, then uh, that, that's a big risk for the town and for all the businesses here. Um, so we came up, we feel like there's a need for what we're calling a destination marketing organization, please, um, to coordinate the tourism and marketing needs of, of the area, um, and that this is really an investment in, in our future um, and something we need to look at seriously and, and, um, and make happen. Um, and a lot of it will require the co coordination and cooperation of, of the business community and the town. And uh, the town, some town officials, including Pauline and uh, John, have been at a bunch of these meetings as well. Um, so the vision right now um, is to create a destination marketing organization that focuses on economic vitality in Manchester. Um, and we, we're trying to create something that's long-term, that's got a sustainable business model, uh, that's very focused on, on marketing issues, and it's fully transparent to the community. Um, and we think we've hit on those key elements. Um, the model would be it for funding the destination marketing organization would be an assessment district of the, all commercial properties in Manchester. Um, and the idea of assessment district came about because we started looking across the country and at other communities trying to figure out, well, you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. There's a lot of uh, very vibrant places across the country and across the state uh, doing interesting things. And, and how do they go about this? Um, and a lot of towns and cities across the country have special assessment districts um, ranging in uh, use from everything from infrastructure to marketing to putting on special events to uh, many other ways. I mean, you can tailor the district and the assessment district and the uses of that money um, however you'd like, and that's one of the, the advantages that we saw. Um, in Saratoga, where um, I never introduced myself, but I'm Chris Morrow from the North Shire Bookstore. So we have, we have a second store in Saratoga Springs, and uh, so they have a special assessment district for the, and they use uh, their funds for signage and wayfinding and parking issues and whatnot. Uh, Berkeley, California, we looked at very closely. They have an interesting one. 
Middlebury has one akin to what we're talking about. Bennington has one. Um, there are really hundreds of these across the country. So that's where we came up with this idea, because they're being used very successfully in other places. Um, and so again, the idea of the, the DMO would be to promote town of Manchester by focusing on convention sales, tourism marketing, sales and services, ultimately increasing the visitor base to Manchester. Uh, so some, some of the main priorities that we've been talking about, uh, one of which came up last night, which is the website. Uh, we, we need a, uh, a comprehensive and current um, and robust website and social media presence. So that's one of the things we're going to be working on. Um, coordination. This is kind of under the radar for a lot of people, but we feel it's very important that there's a lot of people and a lot of businesses doing um, interesting things and spending a fair amount of money. Um, and if some of these efforts were coordinated, we could leverage each other's efforts and, and really get a lot more bang for our buck. And uh, it would be less expensive. Um, Another element is there needs to be a, a, a point organization to work with the state, to work with the shires, and other regional businesses um, or organizations. Right now, there's, there's no one. If, if someone from the State Department of Tourism comes down here and says, you know, I have these um, reporters from Condé Nast magazine, they want to come to check out Manchester, you know, there's no one here for them to liaison with, and so that stuff it doesn't happen. Um, there's all kinds of things like that that are falling through the cracks now. Um, destination marketing would be the, the key element, and this isn't just throwing a few ads and some papers, but a comprehensive destination marketing plan to bring more visitors to the area. Um, and with the construction of the newer uh, hotels um, and the expanded bed base and the um, building out the field at the rec center. We have a lot of opportunity that we didn't have previously for conventions and uh, sports tournaments and the like. Um, so that could be an el another element that we focus on to bring visitors and, and money to the area. Um, and so the, you know, the obvious benefits of building economic vitality are the businesses become more profitable, we have more jobs in town, uh, new businesses can open up, There'll be more people moving to the area and contributing to the tax base, um, increasing in property values over time. Uh, as the, uh, the money flows through the community from the restaurants and hotels and retail, it goes to all the, the service businesses in town, so there's a whole secondary effect of building those businesses. Um, and ultimately, all of this leads to greater support for the community in terms of the schools, nonprofits, the arts, and um, all the elements of the other elements of the community that, that need the support of the business community. Um, so right now we're talking about a structure that would uh, what's that? Ten cents per thousand. Oh that's an old that's an old one, right. Yeah. Um, so that should be ten cents per hundred. Um, <coughs> commercial assessment district would assess all commercial property, and this is just an idea. People don't want to get too excited about it right now, or um, there's a lot of other ideas working um, on the table as well, but we think this is a good one. It's a proposed rate of about 10 cents per hundred of dollars of property value, which would generate around a $300,000 budget. Uh, the money would be put into a, a new fund, um, a town fund separate from the town general fund. And um, this organization would present a budget to the select board for approval, and that's how the tax rate would, would actually get um, finalized and figured out. Um, and the structure we're looking at is to create a seven member um, board made up of property owner, commercial property owners, business owners, and some at large members uh, to be appointed by the select board. And um, this organization would hire staff, probably part-time to begin with, maybe uh, going on to full-time, um, and would, would have the ability to utilize the budget that was approved by the select board. And all these would, would be um, under the open meeting laws, so it would be 
you know, open, these meetings would be open, the minutes would be available, the budget would be published, um, so it, it would all be accountable and transparent to the community, which is a big part of this. Uh, so right now we're just in the process of gathering feedback we presented to the select board last night and they were interested enough for us to uh, keep working. Um, um, we're, we're continuing to develop a, a working plan and a budget uh, and this would be the most uh, aggressive schedule um, if we could present a finalized plan to the select board for their approval for inclusion on the, in the uh, town meeting in March. Um, this would, an element of this would need approval by the state legislature in order to create this task, taxing district. Um, and so if, if it passes a town meeting, we would have language drafted, which our representatives could take to Montpelier. Um, and there's, so, there's some uncertainty as to how long that process would take, but hopefully it would be passed up there. Um, and then this would all start in uh, the next fiscal year. Um, you know, of course, we'll, we'd be doing work in the meantime to set it up so that we could get the ground running in July once, once the funding was there. Um, and that's really the, the general framework. And we just we want to open it up for questions and comments. Um, so, so please, yeah, Jamie. Is the tax based just on the property value or is it the business value? No, this is property value. So it only goes to the property owners. Correct. Okay. Correct. You know, obviously, the, the landlords and property owners have uh, some some of that will get passed on if you have a triple net lease, and but it's completely up to the. Uh, the landlords, how they handle the, the added expense. Um, you know. no, obviously, no one is in love with the idea of a new tax. We're, we're, most of us are all commercial property owners in town, so this, this is not where we uh, uh, started out necessarily, but the fact is that if we're going to uh, invest in the future of the town, we need to come up with the money somehow. Um, well, I missed the first part of the meeting. Do you have a precedent for this? Is there a place where it's worked? There's dozens of places where it's worked across the country. There's, I mean, it's working. They have a version in Middlebury. They have a version in Rutland. They have a version in Bennington. There's one. In, there's actually there's probably hundreds of them. Um, they're not all. They're, they're all shaped differently depending on the specific community. The districts have different boundaries and the uses are, are different. But the, the model is all. It's very successful. What kind of budget are you aiming to go for? What would you like to have? You mentioned 300000 up there. Is that the budget per year or is that a budget for? Yeah, the that, that's, that's the target budget, annual budget. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's right now that's just a general num number and, and we're, we'd create a very detailed, specific <laughs> budget and then the tax rate would be based on that. But we think $300,000 is a good um, number if you, you factor in having um, a staff person and then money to actually implement a lot of the, the marketing and, and uh, coordination efforts that the organization will be doing. Um, you know, that would be good. Would we be hiring a dedicated marketing company to help with this or it would just be us? We, we would likely be entering it in the, into contracts with people with using that money, but you know, those kinds of things um, you know, are yet yet to be determined. But you know, you know, we don't have all the we wouldn't you know, we'd put together a whole team of marketing professionals, paid marketing professionals, we'd certainly want to utilize um, expertise that's out there on a contract basis. I missed um, most of the meeting that was on TV last night, but um, I'm curious, was it ever discussed um, with the select board about utilizing any of the current tax that is levied, the 1% the that is to, to, to put towards this? Was there any, ever any talk about using some of that as an investment mm -hmm. back into the businesses that are generating that money now? Well, Greg Cutler brought up the idea of 
of bringing the, the residents into this because they've approved, Manchester residents have already approved marketing monies the last few years, mm -hmm. um, which could be funneled into this effort. Um, that's as close as we kind of got to okay. that. And I'm not talking about adding anything in addition. I'm talking about we collect that the local every year. Tax. And that money right. could be in, reinvested into a cool idea. Right. Right? So right. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great idea. I think it, it might be uh, an uphill battle given that uh, where we're at now. Right. Um, you know, my personal opinion is it should have been written into the original law when it became, you know, when we instituted the option of tax, the percentage of that should have gone into right. a marketing fund right. precisely right. That's, for this. But, it's like, uh, how are we using that money is kind of fuzzy right. to me. Well, it does lower our, our tax rate. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the, you know, if you looked at it combined, you could just say that this and that, yeah. you know, we have, I think, the 12th lowest tax rate in the state, is that yeah. right, something like that? Yeah. Right, so, um, which kind of, the flip the side of that is you might not be investing, um, you know, we are as you said, nobody likes taxes, but rather than looking at it as an, as an expenditure, it's an investment. Right, it's exactly. The yeah, flip we side of the coin. Looking at this uh, as a long-term investment, for okay. sure. Um, someone else had their hand up over here. Andrew did. No? Yeah. Chris, the question I would have is uh, between now and July, um, you know, as you guys have all talked about, there's work that has to be done for marketing, the events, Manchester, getting ready for the season. Is your group, um, you know, kind of with these existing funds that have been set aside to, to market the town, um, is, is that going to be work that will be done in this interim? Or are you guys just solely focused on the um, you know, kind of getting the, the legislation in place. Yeah, we have plans for July. We have two subcommittees. One is kind of the focusing on the structure and the longer term effort here, and the other is a marketing committee that uh, Ron is on. And there is uh, money that the town has allocated the last couple of years, which has been matched by the business community um, to the tune of what is it, Ron? 70, $72,000 private and, and town money. Right, so that money in the, in the short term can be used for, some of it's being used to the market merriment, some of it's being used to just $1,000 or something to go to the um, show, the New York show. Travel show. Travel Travel show in January. Show. But there's this money that can be used for a website, um, rebuild in the meantime, and or other um, efforts that we've been talking about. Um, definitely. So, for the surrounding towns, I know it said something regarding for monies. How? What structure for money do you plan on charging them? Uh, that, that's yet to be determined. Um, this has to be Manchester focused because it's Manchester public money. But we we don't want to make it. You know. The, the idea from the beginning was not to make it exclusive uh, in the sense of shutting out surrounding towns or the, the, the mountains or anybody else for that matter, but it'll have to be set up in a structure so that uh, we create some kind of a la carte options for them to uh, buy into certain programs. If we're having a specific marketing program, say to the capital district, and they want to buy into that, then there's a mechanism to do that, or the website. They want to promote their business on the Manchester website. There's a mechanism to do that, so that um, it's both uh, supplementing the budget and giving uh, everyone opportunity to uh, work together and present a united face to the our visitors as a as a region. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Astrid. How do you visualize the final product? The chamber had a, a um, office presence with someone to answer questions and brochures and things like that. In this virtual world where most of our visitors are working from their iPhone and have the answer before you do, um, are you thinking more of a virtual office with handy little kiosks to access such things as maps and, and other brochures or do you have any sense of 
what you would like this to look like? Well, that, a lot of that is still under conversation and we, we'd like everyone's input on that. I think we, if we had a local presence, there is still some need for a local information kiosk type thing. It certainly wouldn't need to be a big building. Um, and uh, maybe a staff person could could manage that, um, or or not. It could be all virtual. I don't know. You know, we don't have a fixed notion of, of that. We do know that we need a good website and uh, and social media presence for sure. Um, but it seems like this. You know, I see a, a lot of people still going to the door of the old chamber building looking for for help. So it seems like there's there is still a need for some kind of small physical presence. Um, of course, we'd have to see, you know, what kind of, how, that, how much that would cost and, you know. So, there's a lot of details like that that um, are not worked out and, and we're really looking for feedback from the community on what people feel is a priority. Because um, even $300,000 does not, will not go that, that far, so we need to be uh, really focused in how we use it if we get that far. I'm concerned about the increase of taxes and who's, I mean, what assessment are you basing this on? On the tax assessment that the town has or are some going to be coming? Like my building, for instance, is not all retail. You know, some of it's rental space, some of it's whatever, but it's not all retail. I, I'm also concerned with, you know, for the same reason I wasn't a big fan of the chambers, I didn't feel like the monies that I spent when I was a member of the chamber didn't really help me. I felt like I was paying to help all the other businesses that were in the core of the town, the outlets, and you guys and whatnot that are right in the middle. For the smaller businesses that are off the beaten path, down Elm Street and, you know, and whatnot, you know, we're going to be paying our taxes, but still supporting the things that are in the core. Like, how do I know that I'm going to be giving to this thing and I'm going to get anything out of it more than the marketing that I'm already doing for myself? Well, the, the, the tax would be based on the, the grand list value of the property. So that, I'm not making up a whole new assessment or anything, it's already all set. Um, and, um, you know, you, your concerns are, are, are valid. You know, we, uh, we all, we've had discussions ourselves around that as well. Uh, you certainly benefit from having more visitors here and getting press in the Boston Globe or, you know, like we did last week or in, in other places. And so the idea is we're, we're all working together to get more visitors and this isn't targeted to downtown, um, you know, all, all area um, businesses will, will hopefully benefit. Um, and it will be, what we're doing is gonna be transparent. And so you'll be able to see exactly what we're doing, what we're not doing and how much things uh, cost and offer your input at open meetings. Uh, so it's, it's going to be, um, doesn't mean to say you're going to agree with everything that happens, uh, but uh, you know, we're trying to create a, a, a structure that's, that's better than it was before and that's uh, more transparent and that um, and it's, it's targeting getting people here and hopefully you agree that more people here will benefit your business. Everybody's in favor, right? I can see that. Yeah, it's good. I'm sorry, I forgot the cookies. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to make really paramount is one of the problems with the chamber was that a lot of people lost faith in it. Pretty much like what Andrew was perhaps suggesting with his words, how are we going to win those people back over to push this through? Because we need to get their confidence back because I don't want to point out the obvious, but half the people sitting in front of us are also people that were involved in the chamber which fell apart in some way advisory or on the board. So how do we change that? Well, this is not uh, the chamber, and we're not going to rehash the whole chamber. Well, we do need to get people to uh, stand behind the idea. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, that's what we're here for. I mean, hopefully the, the ideas and the concept and the model um, people can get behind and the, the idea of transparency and, and uh, having a voice. Um, you know, and being focused, it's going to be much more focused than the chamber was. We're not going to be uh, doing a car show unless it's bringing in lots of people. You know, we're not going to 
have our staff person hanging Christmas lights. You know, this is this is a different. Well, I like animal. the idea that you're going to focus mostly on Manchester because I think that was part of the problem and not being all the time up in Montpelier, which the chamber was always doing in the past. And we just need to get everybody behind that. They just have to realize now we are just focusing on Manchester so we can fix the problem. I think that's what we need to focus on. Yeah. That'll get the confidence back. Chris, well, any ideas you have? I think uh, one of the things that we talked about in the marketing committee. Can you speak the, up? Oh, sure. One of the things we talked about in the marketing committee, which we haven't really, which we're working on, are sort of metrics for measuring success. I mean, I think that's, you know, uh, with digi digital media, um, it, you know, sh what percentage increase should there be in retail sales, in hotel revenues, in, uh, you know, whatever ki other kinds of metrics that we can develop. I think that's really key for all of us because otherwise it's like doing a lot of good stuff but we don't you know we don't know what the result is so that's one of the things that the marketing committee is also focusing on which I think to your point will be really key to the credibility which of the effort too, mm -hmm. yeah exactly spent right exactly day. just exactly that's exactly right what are the uh, uh, think what is the thinking in current status of uh, the means for the community and, and business community to give feedback to the committee, to, to the group? Well, you, got, you can talk to anyone on, on the panel here, or, uh, you know, we'll be having more public forums. We'll be meeting again on Monday to talk about everything, and we'll probably come up with a schedule and answer questions publicly, and... Yeah, maybe we should create a, a blog or something. Facebook page or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Facebook page that yeah. announces when your meetings are and what the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. That's That'd what be great. Right. Where they can f Post feed questions into us. Yeah. Good idea. Uh, there was another question. Yeah. <clears throat> the biggest draws to our area are building the art center and the ski and the ski mountains. What kind of input have you had from that? Uh, well, Hilton's here today. Um, we haven't talked to the ski mountains. We have, this is our our unveiling, right? You know, we, uh, we spoke to the select board last night, and then today is the first. So we've just been meeting, uh, you know, trying to figure, sort this out. So we're hopefully we'll be hearing from all uh, you know parts of the community, the, the mountains, the uh, the arts center, Hilton, the the arts. I know there's some. Uh, interest by the various playhouses around here and the Southern Vermont Art Center and everything. Um, so the idea is to coordinate and work together to, to lift all boats. So, well, it is a big job, but if, if, it, if we do it properly, it's actually, in the end, easier for everybody, you know? Um, so, it's, it's important. We, well, I'll say something in reference to uh, information output. I think you should use the Manchester Journal, have a weekly column or a bi-monthly column for the general public to keep up mm -hmm. in a quick and easy fashion. Everybody doesn't use internet or email or is computer orientated or TV orientated. So I think you should use all varieties of exposure. Sure. Maybe. Happy to talk to Greg about that. Um, and Gina was nicely here tonight, today, and they were here last night. So uh, hopefully the community will get to see it and comment as well. But we will create a Facebook page and get it in the, uh, in the paper as well. Let's get started. Other comments, ideas? As far as events, you guys have no plan on getting involved in any of the events that we have had for years. Uh, well, Mary, there's a little bit of energy behind getting the word out about Merriment. Most of those events were not planned by anybody in this group, but we're kind of putting it together as the package. Um, but we, we don't right now. Uh, 
you know, have specific events planned. But you know me, Sal. I'll come up with something. <laughs> Drive it home. If, if you don't mind, Chris, I mean, there's yeah. there's things that are happening out there. Like we just met with uh, ITV, which is ind independent television, uh, like a Sundance yes. Film Festival, similar, but just for independent television. They're actually been doing this event up in Dover, uh, Vermont, for the past four years. They're actually engaging us to see if we want to take on this. It's a five-day event. It's a phenomenal. Uh, thousands of people will be here. Um, lots of opportunities for all businesses to really have a, a great showing of Manchester to these folks who've never been here before. But here's where the challenge lies that we've all been experiencing. Who spearheads that? Who helps get the community together behind that? And that's one of the reasons. It's not that they're going to be event focused. It's just when events are tap knocking at our door, they're out and about, whoever these people may be. Because this panel may not even be on the commission or be part of it in you know any way, shape, or form when this all comes to fruition. But it's really important to have some key people that can bring everybody together and talk about these options and these events that could really highlight Manchester and in, in the surrounding areas. Yeah. It's exciting stuff. Very exciting. Well, that's like the horse show. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a version of the horse show that outgrew Wakefield right. and needs something bigger. To me, that is more interesting. I mean, Manchester Merriman is a great, small, right. feel-good. Yeah. I never really felt like that was doing, you know, attracting people here from outside. It was more for locals. I don't know. Maybe it was. but. This is really exciting. Yeah, I think events are really key because they um, they bring a constituency to the community that you know th we didn't maybe have a, a right. way of attracting before. So, I mean, that's really the partnership that that happens with events that people sort of come with their event and their following. Mm -hmm. So that's always great. But that's not. To, but the other piece of it is, and we talked in the marketing committee. There's so many great things going on here already, and to pack, be able to package those and bring greater visibility to them is just equally as important. Mm -hmm. What does Saratoga do for the tourists? How do they advertise all their events in Saratoga? Not to the locals, but how do they get it out to them? The tourists from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, whoever comes into Saratoga. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Saratoga is some, somewhat different animal. They have, a, they have a, a big convention bureau yeah. as well, um, which is very active with the, the city center downtown. Um, well, what's their most successful piece? Uh, you know, honestly, I'm not sure. I, I can ask the, the head of the chamber over there and, and see what his opinion is. Uh, they have very active social media presence, um, very active. Um, but um, they're, they're also, you know, they have a budget for, for reaching people downstate. And then the other piece of this is, is this on the state level. You know, Vermont puts in very, very, very little money into tourism and marketing. Uh, New York just announced another $55 million that they're putting into um, tourism and marketing just last week or the week before. Um, you know, all the states surrounding us are, doing, are putting in many millions of dollars more than Vermont is putting into this. Um, so it's, in a way, it's kind of left up to us um, to, to pick, up, um, you know, pick up the sticks on that one. Uh, so it's just another... Um, layer of this of why we think it's important because certainly not we're not getting the help from Montpelier on this. Um, Next question, Carolyn, what is uh, Stratton News for uh, advertising downstate? They do their own. They have, um, they manage their own advertising. Well, when, don't you think once you're established like that, everybody knows and the word spreads that they're happy? Their friends are going to be happy That's when they right. join them there. That's, That's the right. way it goes. Saratoga, the hot spot is the Racino. The food is good, the machines are great, and people love to gather here. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't I'm know, yes, but I know a lot of people that go and they keep on encouraging me. Well, and you have the racetrack. It's big. Yeah, um, I think so. I don't <laughs> Well, What's that? I, th I think Sylvia wants a job. Yeah. No, Sylvia's 
too old for a job. Because I don't agree with a lot of things well, that are They have the Raisino, they have the Tax. That is quote. They have Global Foundries, which is huge, the biggest chip manufacturer, I think, in the world, right down near there. They have a, they have a very diverse economy over there, which is, still, which, um, you, you know, we're, we're trying to, you know, emulate in a way is in terms of being able to bring new businesses to the area, service yeah, businesses. We don't want a chip fast plant, but we, we do want to uh, build the, the economy around. I don't but, think in the capital district area you can tell the difference between now, it's getting so large, what used to be farm country is no longer, but you have Albany, you have Troy, you have Schenectady, you have Scotia, you have Mechanicville, you have Saratoga. Mechanicville is just dirt all over. They're just, everything is moving there. It's amazing. If you come down that way every day, you probably notice it too. Medical centers, dentist's office, new shopping areas. It's just, there's hardly any sidewalk. It's all roads, and there are three or four lanes all over the place. Well, Clifton Park is a real danger zone, I think. Right. But yeah, so everything our, our blends. Area. There is no separations. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot of sprawl going on. So it's important yeah. for us to do it. We've got uh, a lot going on. Do it on the too. Vermont way and, and um, well, I, I develop, don't. you know, according to our scale and, and to the. Uh, our natural environment, and we have special quality Act 250 and things like that yeah. over here that they don't have over there. Don't um, get me wrong, I like what we have here. I'm not so happy about traveling that way anymore. Right. Well, we have a lot here that people don't know about, that's you know, right. and that's that's part of why we're doing this. Is we have we have a tremendous amount already here, going uh, a lot of assets, and um, you know we need to do a better job of getting the word out about what's going on. Exactly. Um, Let's start by making it snow about this winter. Yeah. <laughs> the snow would help. After the meeting, we'll all get together and do a snow dance. Yes! <laughs> um, did anyone else up here want to talk about their reasons for pushing this agenda? Well, I can just say, from my point of view, um, Looking at the footprint of the building that I'm in, the 10 cent on $100 um, of property value is equal to what I was putting into the chamber. And this, to me, seems like a much better opportunity, a much better way to spend the money um, where everybody is equally represented. It's not just those who paid to play. It's not over the mountain. It is the town of Manchester and everyone will get equal representation um, on the website. Um, but I think the most important thing is that if we drive business to town, sure everyone thinks, yeah, they'll go out to eat at the Perfect Wife, they'll stay at the Taconic Hotel, but if I'm more successful, I have more money. I'm going to put more flowers in my garden. I'm going to pave the entire driveway. My dad. <laughs> um, pay your rent. I can, I can pay my rent. <laughs> um, redo the dining room. You know, do some construction. Repaint. Do the same thing to my home. So I, I, I just feel very strongly about the need to really bring more people to town and let them see how amazing where we live is, and take part in that and hopefully want to move here and then you know we'll sell some homes these two will be more successful our taxes will go down the schools will be better you know i just feel like the trickle down is very very obvious and important mm -hmm. you're right here amen okay thank you <laughs> okay next on the agenda snow dance <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? No. Ask you. Just knowing all you guys, I know how busy you are, and I just want to thank you all for the energy and effort you put into that. That takes quite a lot. And I applaud you for that, and thank you. Thank you. So
So as we said, you know, this is just the beginning. Please share your ideas and uh, input to anybody here. We'll, we'll create a Facebook page. You can post things there. Um, and we look forward to moving forward. Is Thank there already a Facebook page for what you've created? Uh, no, we need, we need to create okay. one. Okay. We're meeting on Monday, so we can come up with the name of it and we can share right. it with everybody. I have two URLs that bought for the uh, town of Manchester for this purpose, so I'll share those with you later. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Uh, all right. Thanks all for coming. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.